So in this little video, I'm going to show you how to move your information, your MIDI sequence, from Logic X to Sibelius 7. And it used to be much more difficult um, to do. You'd have to export everything as a MIDI file. Go to File, Export MIDI. And then when you did that and opened up the file into Sibelius, oftentimes your music looked pretty bad and it had the wrong track names and stuff. There's a lot of um, preparation to do to make it look good or decent. Okay. So what I'm going to do here instead is um, I'm going to export everything as a MIDI, uh, not as a MIDI file, but a music XML file. And that solves a lot of the problems. Um, some things are different, though, if you've done it with MIDI files before. You'll need to want to make sure that your whatever track names you have here, you use um, the same ones that will be found in Sibelius. So I have here violin, viola, um, bass, and drum set set here. Uh, because these are names that can be found in Sibelius program itself. So when I transfer the file over, it'll give them the proper names in the staff. Each of these staves will be the properly named things. Um, there's another little difference or two. I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to go to the score editor because this is where I have to export it from. The other difference is everything looks cool right now. It looks good. I have my arpeggiations look fine. Rest looks fine. Everything looks notated nicely. Um, but when I first started out, this drum set didn't look correct. It was labeled with this style menu over here. See, styles. It was labeled with, instead of drums as it has it on there, it was labeled with bass. And when you do that, look what it looks like. It um, stems in the same direction. It looks like chords for the drums. And what we really want is multiple voices with stems in opposite directions like that to show the different um, drums that are being used. So I went to here hit that and now everything looks good and it'll show up like that in logic too which is nice cool so now I have this piece and you know it's obviously in here the instrumentation is not for um, classical instruments and such the way you, the way it sounds I have synthesizers playing this stuff um, but I wanted to translate it over to some classical instruments in Sibelius so it'll sound like this in a loop here So we have this arpeggiated violin line, some violas hitting some chords here, um, and then down here, or whatever strings here, I just add this later, but it's probably be played by some strings or some brass. Um, here, bass line and drum set playing along. Now, none of these exact sounds are found in Sibelius, right? So we're not going to get those same sounds there, but we can select sounds that we do want there, and we can start out with everything kind of working here. So now I'm going to go to a file. I'm going to go to export, and I hit um, not selection as MIDI file, but uh, select, uh, score as music XML. That's the big difference here. I say save. I've already done this before, so it's going to ask if I want to replace it. Yes, I do. And then I go over to uh, Sibelius, and I'm going to open it up in here. I find out on the desktop where I saved that thing. Click on it, say open. And it's going to give me some options here. It's going to say layout and formatting. Do I want to use the same stuff that it's using in Logic? Probably not really, because Logic um, isn't as sophisticated as handling the pages and stuff. Um, and I also don't want to use um, update and formatting and stuff from the music XML file, probably. I want to use the Sibelius stuff, because it's really got the pro stuff going on in there. Orientation, portrait, landscape, that's, that's really up to you. Let Sibelius choose instruments, yeah. It's going to choose instruments, and uh, it's going to use the names from the music XML file. So not a whole lot of options. I unchoose these ones and let Sibelius handle it, but otherwise, that's it. Hit OK. And look at that. That's pretty nice. That's just like I expected here. It's even showing my out of range bass notes here. Okay. Um, so what's going to sound like? Well, it's going to sound like whatever instruments I have um, as default ones in Sibelius. So I hit um, play. But not bad, really. I mean, it, it, the you know the sounds are all fine. It's the correct sound has the correct thing on, except for this drum set's not in here. Look at this. There's no drum set sound. So let's see if we can change that. We may actually have to change which note lines these are on. Um, but I think it looks good. So let's do that. Let's go to change, um, and drum set. I want to click on that, and my cursor is highlighted blue, as you can see. 
I'm going to click right before the drum set. And that should. Well, I don't hear anything yet. Nope. So some of these sounds in here don't exist. So we might have to select some of these notes and move them around to make it ones that play back. Um, because drum sets are mapped specifically and it may not have these ones. But let's hear that now. Well, you know, that's basically there. <laughs> um, so, good enough. Um, if you want some different sounds, you can select them too. You can go to the playback menu, right? And you can say, what playback configuration do you want? It says Sibelius 7 sounds here. I'm going to actually use a different set. Um, you could use general MIDI. I'm going to use this one called Note Performer. And that's a sound library you can buy um, on the interwebs. I highly recommend it. Go to um, Note Performer. And this site um, makes a sound library that works just in Sibelius. The reason why you'd want it is it plays back all the sounds, um, including the articulations that you write. So if you write crescendos, if you write um, staccato markings, if you write um, even things like harmonics and stuff, it knows what they mean in your notation and will play them back and they sound much better than the default Sibelius ones. They sound pretty good. Um, and so for making quick mock-ups and stuff, it's a good place to go. So now let's hear what happens there. I actually haven't heard this yet. The drums are crazy loud, <laughs> but everything else is pretty good. Let's go to the mixer here in Sibelius here. We're going to go to mixer. I'm actually going to mute the drums for the moment. So uh, here it goes, viola, double drums. Yeah, so you have to double click it actually in Sibelius. So it's all orange like that. That mutes it. Okay, now let's listen to the, the playing of it. I mean, uh, not bad there, uh, especially the the violin has a nice sound there. We might want to put a slur in it, but let's hear it one more time. And you can mess around with the mixing here. Um, I think, well, there's enough violin, it's easy to hear, right? Um, viola and these these chord hits needed to be a bit louder um, notice how it's panned too this is panned over to the left um, and bass to the right I actually probably change that to be the opposite there maybe viola more in the middle um, violins on the right um, yeah so actually I actually only have those three part textures so let's hear that bit more violin okay on the violin too it's doing these staccatos uh, um, or detache right you know um, and there's so the detached a bit I might want to actually put a slur on them it's up to you how bright it is but these sound pretty good if you do that pretty good sound so if I hit s for slur and hit space bar right that's gonna put them on there and so long, so on like that. Um, I actually don't want to be doing this for every single every single one. Imagine if I had to do this for a bunch of lines. Um, so I'm going to select that and um, I'm just going to copy only the slurs, only the articulations that are involved. Hit copy that. And then paste it into the other area. So now we can hear how that sounds. Mm -hmm. 
much better. That's it.